Okay, we are going to go ahead and finish up Excel by doing the independent project 4-4. So I've already downloaded the file and I have it on my, my uh, computer here. I've already saved it, so I um, saved it to my desktop. And then I also downloaded and saved the resources file to my desktop also. So we're going to start on um, step three of the instructions. It says to import the client info file in cell A4. So here's cell A4. I'm going to go to data and I'm going to choose get external data from text. And I'm going to go to my desktop because that's where my file is. And here's that client info file. And I'm going to choose import. I'm going to not change anything on this page. It should already have the delimited button highlighted. And I'm going to go to next. When we did the guided project, we had to change the delimiter to comma because that's the format the text was in. This is already in tab format. So you notice I already see the lines for my columns. I don't have to change anything here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose finish and okay. And all my data shows up. Now I'm on to step number four. It says to unhide row 10. So right now, if you look over here on the row numbers that goes from nine to 11, I'm just gonna put my mouse in between there and right click. And then I can click down here in the um, shortcut menu, unhide. And then row 10 shows up. And then the next part of step four says to fix the phone number in cell C12. So if you look here, this phone number is missing a hyphen or a dash. So I'm gonna click it up here in the formula bar and just type the dash in and hit enter. And that fixes that. So the step number five says to set conditional formatting for cells I5 to I13, that's these values of gross sales. So I'm going to highlight and go to the home tab. I'm going to click on conditional formatting and highlight cells rules. It says I'm going to look for values less than 1500. So I'm going to choose the less than option. I'm looking for values less than 1500. So I'm going to type 1500 in the box. And then the color it says to use is yellow fill with dark yellow text. So I'm going to choose that and click OK. And there should be three of them that have that color combination. Step number six says to do um, a sort, and it says to sort first by product and then by client name. So I'm going to go to the data tab, and I'm going to click on this sort button to bring up this dialog box. First thing I'm going to sort by is product name or product service, and I'm going to sort it from A to Z, so I'm not changing that. Then I'm going to add a level to sort it by the next item, which is client name, also A to Z, and then click OK. So it's an order by product, and if there are more than one um, entries with the same product, then it sorts by alphabetical client name. Now what I'm going to do is it says in step number seven, display the auto filter buttons, which basically is going to put a little arrow next to each heading so that I can do some filters. So all I need to do to do that is click this filter button, and it adds those little drop down arrows for each different category. And it says to filter gross sales to only show the color, the yellow colored cells. So in gross sales, I'm going to click on the arrow and I'm going to go filter by color and I'm looking for yellow. So only those three show up. Okay, now I'm going to make a copy in step eight. It says copy this worksheet and rename it and move it to the right. So I'm going to put my mouse over the MN clients. I'm going to right click and go up to move or copy. And then I'm going to click this box that says create a copy and move it to the end and then click OK. So now I have two worksheets with the same um, information. And the second one has a two in parentheses. I'm going to just double click so that I can retype the name and I'm going to name this one subtotals and then hit enter. Now it says to sort Oh, and clear the filter. So I'm going to basically um, over here where it says gross sales, I'm going to click on that drop down arrow now and I'm going to do clear the filter. So I see everything now. And then I'm going to sort the cities alphabetically. So I'm going to click the drop down arrow and go sort A to Z. So the cities now are in order. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a subtotal. So I'm going to click the first name, which is Mike Gunderson. So that's cell A5. I still have the data tab showing, so make sure you're on data, and then I'm going to click subtotal. So I'm going to create a subtotal every time the city changes. So in this first box, I'm going to choose city, and I'm going to keep it as a sum, and I'm basically summing up the gross sales. 
So these are the three things that you should see in these boxes, the check mark next to gross sales. Don't need to change anything in this section and then click OK. So it adds a subtotal for each of the city's sub, um, gross sales added together. Okay. And step number 12, it says to copy this worksheet. So I'm going to put my mouse over this tab at the bottom where it says subtotals. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to move or copy. I'm going to click the create a copy box and click move to end and then OK. So now I have another worksheet and it says to change the name to so I'm going to double click and I'm change the name to table data. And the step 13 says to remove the subtotals. So I'm going to go up to the subtotal button and then click on the remove all option. And it goes back to my original worksheet. And then it says to format cells A4 to I13. So I'm going to go up here and I'm actually going to type in A4 colon I13 which highlights all of that. And I'm going to make it into an Excel table. So with it highlighted, I'm going to go here to insert table. And we don't have to change anything here. We just click OK. It asks us, are we sure we do want to do this? We want to click yes. And so there's my table. And we're going to change the table style to medium nine. So with the design tab, I'm going to go to this section that says table styles click the more button and I'm looking for more uh, medium table nine, which is this red colored one in the medium section, second row. And before I do anything else, it says in step number 15 to display a total row. So I'm gonna go up here in the design tab, check off this box that says total row. And so there's my total of gross sales for um, this table. So the next thing is, before I even unhighlight everything, step number 16 says to create a pivot table based on these cells. So down here in the right hand corner, I have the quick analysis button with the table highlighted. So I'm gonna click that button, and I'm gonna go to tables, and I'm gonna choose a pivot table. And before I do anything else, I'm gonna, it says to change the name, it's gonna be called pivot table. So down here at the bottom, I'm gonna double click where it says sheet three, and I'm gonna retype it pivot table with no space. So now I can go ahead and start to create my pivot table. So in step 17, it says to arrange some of the information, and I'm gonna use this section to do what it tells me to. So it says to put the city in the filters area. So I'm going to click city and I'm going to drag it down here. So under filters, you'll see city. Product or service should be under rows and gross values under area. Where's rising and that's down? basically all of the instructions for step number 17. It should look like this when you look at the pivot table fields. So now I want to filter it so that I'm only looking at Bemidji and Brainerd. And I want to check off this box that says select multiple items so I can select those two. And then click OK. And then it says to apply the currency style for B4 to B7. So I'm going to highlight B4 to B7. I'm going to go to the Home tab and I'm going to change the number style Mommy, here to Mommy. currency. So I've essentially finished up step number 19. Step 20 says to insert a clustered column pivot chart. So I'm gonna go to the analyze tab with my pivot chart open, or pivot table, excuse me, and I'm gonna click on the pivot chart button. And I'm gonna choose a clustered column chart. So that shows up now here. Step 21 says to delete the legend. So the legend is this little total thing here showing me what the red stands for. So I'm just gonna click that and then press delete on my keyboard to get rid of it. It says to change the title, so I'm gonna hover over the total, double click to highlight it, and then I'm gonna type in Bemidji and Brainerd Gross Sales is the title. 
and I'm pretty much done with that there. The last step it says, or step 22 before I save and close is to protect the table data sheet. So I'm going to click on the table data and I'm going to right click over it and go up to the option that says protect sheet. And then the password it tells me to use is password with a capital P and the capital letter C. Click OK and then it asks you to type it again to verify. And I'm done. So I can save and I can close and upload. And so that's the chapter four independent project.